Hello, I'm Chris and today I'm going to show the Nexigen Plus statistical features. These are normally used to calculate the statistics for all data in a batch file, but a filter can be used to obtain statistics for selected tests. Firstly, let's open a batch file that contains many tests. To do that, I'm going to use the welcome screen, click on the button Open an existing batch, the dialog shows me files on my computer, and I'm going to select and open the file I need. The results table shows that there are many rows, and each row is a single test. Down in the bottom right hand corner, it shows me that there are 105 tests in this batch file. All the rows are shown with a white background because we have not defined any pass or fail conditions. The table shows that the main results are sample colour, the date and time, the sample height and the maximum load measured during each test. There are two things I can show here. The first is that the timestamp column is not wide enough to show all the data. So to fix this, place the cursor at the right hand side of the timestamp header and we can see that the cursor changes to a cross and then double click. The column will then automatically widen to show all the data. The second thing is that the columns can be reordered. So if I want to move the timestamp column to the left, click on the header and slide it and then release the mouse button and the columns have now reordered. Now let's look at the batch statistics. To do that, click on the statistics tab at the bottom of the screen and here we have the statistics. We have the main statistics of the maximum value, the minimum value, the mean value and the median value for both the height and the maximum load results. The coefficient of variance, standard deviation n and standard deviation n minus 1 are calculated and displayed. For information, standard deviation n uses the same formula as Excel stand dev p and the standard deviation n minus 1 has the same formula as Excel stand dev a. The screen also shows the pass fail status and it shows that the 105 rows passed or good tests and zero rows failed. Now that's because we have not defined any pass or fail conditions. So let's look at adding one of those. We'll go back to the results table and we'll select a column to add a pass or fail condition and in this case I'm going to use maximum load. So right mouse click on the maximum load column we have a menu displayed. We will select Properties, click. We will now select Limits and then select Within Range. Now I want to define a pass as being any value between a minimum of 25 newtons and a maximum of 60 newtons. So here I can enter 25 newtons and 60 newtons. And when I click on the OK button, the program reads the data and will then colour the rows either red for a failure or green for a good test. We can immediately see that there is at least one failed test and that's row number 5. But if I scroll through the data, we can see there are several other red rows. 
Now it would be nice to view all the failures together so we can analyse and this is done using a filter. So we'll select the main menu item of view. We call it row query but it is a filter. So we'll select row query to display the dialog and the options displayed in this dialog depend upon the batch file but there will always be options of rows that passed and rows that failed. Select the rows that failed option and then click on the OK button and now the data table is filtered. If we look down the bottom right hand corner of the screen it's showing me that we're looking at seven of the tests out of a total of 105. Let's look at the maximum load values and if we look down here we can see that all of the values are below our minimum requirement of 25 newtons. Some are very low. To look at the graph of any of these tests, let's say test number 88, double click on the 88 to display the graph. The left hand side here shows a legend is telling me that I'm looking at graph number 88 and here we have view the previous graph and view the next graph. Now normally if I don't filter my data if I click on view the previous graph I will go to graph number 87 but I have filtered my data so when I click on the previous graph it's actually showing me the previous failure and in this case it's number 78. If I click on it again it's the failure before that failure and it's graph number 70. So we can see it's, it's quite easy to move through the failed tests to examine the graphs. Let's look again at these statistics. So we'll click on the statistics tab. We want to view the statistics for all of the tests so we need to remove the filter and we do that by going view show all rows. Now we know that all the failures did have low values of maximum load and if we look at the minimum value maximum load it's actually 3.24 newtons. It's showing me here that we've got 98 good tests and seven failures. Now 3.2 newtons is very low for my uh, product so it could be that there was a system failure and not a product failure. For example the sample slipped in the grips. So I don't really want that sample in my statistics. Now we can exclude them and we can do them individually but it might be easier to do it as a group. So let's go back to the results table we need to look at all of, of the failures so we need to put the filter back on. So let's go view row query rows that failed OK. So there, there are the failures. Now I would like to exclude some of these and we can either exclude all of them by just clicking on the first one holding the shift key down and right mouse click on the bottom one and we can see another menu and there's an option there to ignore in statistics and if I do that they will all be ignored. Now I don't want to do that because looking here I think these are okay so I just want to ignore 59, uh, sorry 70, 78 and 88 so I will select the first one, hold the shift key, right mouse click on the last one, ignore in statistics. Now we can see now the rows we're ignoring are now shown in blue. Those are not going to be used in the statistics. Let's go back to the statistics page. 
and we can see here now we're only looking at four rows so we've removed three I really want to look at the statistics for all the tests so I'm going to remove the filter view show all rows it's now showing me we have 98 good tests four failures and of course we have the three that we excluded and the minimum minimum value of maximum load is now 19.93 newtons now let's add a pass or fail condition to the height result so let's return to the results page we've already got a, a pass or fail limit here I want to put one on height so again right mouse click properties limits within range and this time I want to define a pass as being any value between a minimum of 12 millimeter and a maximum of 18 millimeter when I click on the OK button the program again reads the data and colors the rows green for good or red for a failure now when I scroll through the data it's not easy to see which tests have failed because of height we can see also that we have good rows in green failed rows in red and rows we have excluded shown in blue let's examine why each particular test failed so again we need to go back to only show the or it is easier to go back to only show the failures so view row query rows that failed OK there's nothing there to show why each row failed but there is another feature select the first one hold the shift key down right mouse click on the last one and in the menu we will select properties we now have a dialog which has a tab for each of these rows and if I click on a tab for example row 5 it tells me here the status of the pass or fail condition and it says it passed height but it failed maximum load let's look at row 40 it passed height it failed maximum load row 59 again it passed on the height row 70 it passed the height 78 passed the height 87 failed height so 87 is a failure because the height was incorrect let's look at row 88 passed the height 89 also passed the height so looking there we can see that row 87 is the only row that failed because the height was incorrect or, or with outside of our limits okay let's close that what I want to do now is investigate the, st the statistics for each color so I need to filter the data according to the color column now we've seen the row query dialog offers options of rows that passed and rows that failed but it didn't have any options for selecting the color so to do this we need to select the column that we want to filter we need to filter on the color column so right mouse click and in the menu select properties then select query and SPC and now we're going to check the option include this column in row queries when I click on the OK button that is now part of the filter to use the filter let's go to view row query and we can now see that we have options for each individual color in the color column so if I'd like to look at the statistics for the red sample I will select red 
I'm going to remove rows that failed because I want to see all of the red samples. Click on the OK button and there is the data for the red samples and in this case they all passed. If you print a, a batch report anything that is visible in this data table and the corresponding statistics will get printed. So it's easy to print a report for, for example, the red colours, the red samples. Let me examine what happened for the yellow samples. So I'll select yellow. You can use red and yellow together, in which case you get a combined batch. But if you just want the yellow ones together, then obviously remove the red, just leave yellow selected, and now this is the yellow. We can see here that we've got two rows shown in blue to indicate that two of these samples were excluded from the statistics. Let's have a look at one more. So this time let's go to the blue samples. And this time we can see that we have one failure and one that we excluded. In all cases, the number of rows that displayed is shown at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. That's the end of this session. I hope it was useful. I will be covering the SPC features in another session. Thank you for watching.